All right. So for video number two, we're going to talk about the fun topic of indexing within Google Search Console. Uh, very exciting, I know. Um, so this was one of the requests someone had for me last week. Uh, so I just figured I would just kind of do a full run through of this page report, uh, what you what you could be looking out for, um, kind of issue, uh, common issues that I come across that really ones that are going to be issues and then ones that aren't going to be issues. and kind of a way to like tackle most of these. Um, some of these aren't gonna be issues. Some of these are gonna be issues. Um, so I'm gonna kind of give you an idea of uh, what to be looking for. Um, so you can see here in this page indexing report, we have 76 non-index URLs. Um, at a first glance, it actually looks a lot worse than it actually is. Um, if we, I, I always love using, using this, uh, this little drop down over here, which allows me to use the sitemap or filter to the site map so I can look at the URLs on the website that aren't being indexed at the moment. These are URLs that we usually want Google to show, but for whatever reason, they usually, they toss them aside. Could be page quality, um, crawling issues, rendering issues, um, indexing issues. I think I said indexing issues already, but whatever it is, filter to the site map. And then this is gonna drop it down from 76 to, to 5,000, excuse me. Um, so now we're gonna have a little bit more of a, easier, not easier, it's still 5,000, but a more manageable list of URLs that we can go after and tackle. So I'll say in my case, usually the biggest ones that I will want to target using the sitemap filter is going to be um, the uh, discovered and crawled currently not indexed. These are usually where those URLs I was talking about will fall under. Um, and honestly, in most cases, a lot of it is going to come down to content quality. Either it's not aligning with search intent, it's low quality content, it's outdated, um, really, we just need to spruce up the page a little bit. In some cases, you can come here and just manually request each page to be indexed. Um, maybe you might get a page indexed, but it's not guaranteed to drive you any traffic. So um, really, to see the best results, it's better to just kind of give most of these pages a full rehaul. Um, obviously, if they have potential. If they don't have potential and really you wouldn't see any value from it, I would just say to ignore it. Um, but these would be the two main ones that I would usually look at. Um, these other ones are also important specifically because these are being found within the sitemap. So if it's a 404 page, if it's a no index tag, if it's a server issue, those are all things that you want to remove. So Google isn't uh, coming, since it's in the sitemap, you don't want to encourage Google to come back to those pages and crawl them. There are pages either that we don't want Google to see. I mean, in the case of the no index tag, we really don't care for it to be indexed. So we basically kind of want to tell Google to move on to another URL. Um, page with a redirect, that's maybe something I wouldn't include in the sitemap. Whatever it is, you just want to make sure that all, most of these error issues are taken care of and that they're removed from the sitemap. Um, when it actually comes to the sitemap itself, when we're going back to this, uh, pretty large ish, uh, this pretty large number of not indexed pages, um, a lot of it is going to fall under alternate page with proper canonical. Um, and you'll see that's pretty common with e-commerce platforms. Um, you, it's like if you have a like a, a sort filter or any type of uh, parameter query, like if you're uh, looking up for a specific type of product and you're like sorting by new, or if you add a filter, like you want to see specifically like blue pants or blue shoes. I don't know why I said blue, but um, then that would basically add on to your your uh, URL as a query or a query string. Um, which would technically be considered an, another URL, but when you have a proper canonical that's referencing back to that main URL where that query, query string isn't attached, then Google will recognize that this page isn't actually a separate page and it's just a um, kind of like an addition. It's, it's a duplicate, but it's an addition to that page um, that you were originally looking for. Um, in this case, it's not so much of an issue. Um, people will say that you'll probably want to add the, um, you'll probably want to disallow, um, yeah, disallow those query strings within the robots.txt. Just tell Google, like, don't even crawl those URLs in the first place. Just completely ignore them. Um, you can also no index them. Um, canonical works as well. The only issue with canonical is that Google, with a no index tag and the disallow, uh, those are directives. Like, you're telling Google, like, you cannot you cannot do this, like avoid this. Like this is a direction that you're giving to, uh, directive that you're giving to Google. Um, as with the canonical tag, it's actually a hint. So um, even if there is a separate URL in Google, for whatever reason, they're like, they basically say, fuck you, I don't like your, I don't like what you chose. They're basically, they can, they can take, uh, basically choose to index that URL 
over the original one. So um, it's kind of up to them. It's a it's a strong hint that you're giving them, but there is that chance that they're going to basically toss it aside and say, like, basically, yeah, like I said, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want. Um, and you can sometimes see that. I don't think I see it here. Um, usually that issue will come up as um, duplicate, go uh, duplicate Google selected another canonical uh, than user. And that's the case where Google basically said, I'm not using your, uh, your original page. I'm going to use this page over here. Um, and that's, that's something you want to take care of too. Um, normally it's just, you don't want those query strings showing up on Google search. So you always want that original URL showing up for that type of query. Um, some of these other ones usually aren't typically an issue. I mean, in the case of a no index tag, um, Google will still come to those pages less frequently than an indexable URL. But, um, in some cases I usually just opt to add it to the robots TXT. Just tell Google, like, uh, it, like just basically telling them like we don't even want you to look at this part of the site just like basically move on um i think a no index tag is okay to use on a page by page basis but if you have quite a lot of pages like this then i think it would make sense to add it to the the robots txt but however i will say um if you have a page that is indexed and you want to remove it from the index this is going to get a little confusing it makes sense to add the uh, no index tag first to remove it from the index and then add the robot robots txt. If you add the robots txt before the no index tag, then Google will still think that's an indexable page, yet they won't be able to access it to see if there actually is a no index tag. So it, it's still like, eventually it will fall off, but it will still be a visible URL or could be a visible URL. Um, and it's just, it would just be better just to move, remove it from the index first and then add that robots txt. Um, we also have 404 issues. I think this one people sometimes get hung up on a little bit too much. Um, it depends. I feel like it, it's not something where you want to redirect every single one. It's uh, uh, People have said that uh, 404 pages don't necessarily eat up into like crawl budget or how Google is basically crawling your website. Um, if you have a large quantity, I think it would be good taking, uh, tackling it. If you have pages that are previously receiving traffic and are currently uh, receiving traffic and lead to a 404, then it would make sense to redirect. Um, if you also have pages that have um, links pointing to those 404s, then that would also make sense to either redirect that, that page or just update the link uh, directly. Um, it all depends on, on what's going on with the page. Um, Google, unfortunately, won't tell you what those URLs are. Um, or the URLs that have links pointing to those 404 pages. So chances are you'll probably have to use like Screaming Frog or um, H uh, Hrefs to find them. Like any SEO tool will help you find them. But uh, in the case of this, like I don't think a 404 is really something where it, it's like a like a high priority of uh, we need to redirect these URLs. However, with uh, server issues, the issue below this, um, this is something that you might want to tackle. Um, obviously, we have 1,000 URLs that, that are showing up like this. And even when I filtered it to the sitemap, um, we also had a few URLs that were showing up as a server issue. Not as many as before, but we still have a few that are uh, showing up like that. So whatever the reason is, you just want to make sure that you can fix it. Usually it's a hosting issue. Um, either the page is inaccessible, the host isn't loading that page, Google can't access that page. Um, so those you would probably just want to tackle, especially if you have an indexable URL that's showing up as a server issue, that's something you're going to want to replace. Um, it kind of, it's kind of similar in the vein of a soft 404. With a 404, um, with a 404 page, when Google lands on it, they get the status code of an actual 404 page. This page no longer exists. Um, with a soft 404, this shows up as a 200, uh, or 200 status code meaning that page is uh, indexable and they should be able to reach it. But for whatever reason, there was some kind of a roadblock that um, wasn't able to, uh, didn't allow them to access it or when they landed on it, they saw it as a 404 page. Um, sometimes that can be low, quant uh, low content or low quality content and low content. Like if you have a page with like a sentence on it, Google will be like, what is this? Um, sometimes it can also be related to server errors. Uh, whatever the whatever it is, sometimes these are also going to be indexable URLs. In the case of um, filtering it to the sitemap, I think there were a few soft 404s. Yeah, there was only one, but in some cases you can have uh, quite a bit of these. I will also say page with redirect. That's something I wouldn't I wouldn't hyper focus on. 
it's something, especially within the sitemap, I would probably remove those so Google isn't constantly uh, crawling those redirects. However, in the actual sitemap or the actual indexing report of the website, um, I wouldn't get too hung up about them. I think eventually if you have a high quantity and your top issue is pages with redirects, I think it would make sense to eventually start getting rid of those. Um, just because it's just we don't want to we don't want Google to continually crawl those redirects. We just want them to access the live URLs on the website. So it's just best to just kind of let them uh, uh, just kind of get rid of them eventually. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the majority of the ones that I come across. Um, obviously, you sometimes want to check uh, blocked by robots txt. Really, just want to make sure that no indexable URLs are falling into that category. Um, it's pretty rare, but something that you probably want to check for anyways, just so you're making you're making sure you're not blocking uh, Google from crawling pages that you actually want to show in Google Search Console or show on Google Search. Um, and lastly, I'm curious if it shows it. Okay, so we don't have any any more, but this is kind of what I was talking about with when you have uh, when you uh, when you're adding a no index tag to a live page and then adding it to that robots.txt file, if you don't add that uh, no index tag and you um, you just add the robots.txt, this is where it's going to show up. Um, so that's like one possibility there. Another possibility I've seen is Google, or like if a, a page that's blocked by robots.txt is getting, uh, has like backlinks pointing towards it or has internal links pointing towards it, then I've seen it, uh, it gets marked through index but blocked by robots.txt. Um, and it's actually interesting, if you look it up through Google search, you'll actually be able to see that URL, but it will basically it will basically say Google cannot access the content of this page. So you'll have that URL showing on Google search, but it literally won't say anything. So um, that's usually a one you'll probably want to take care of, whether it's redirecting that page, um, making it indexable, or you can even leave it as it is if, if necessary. But uh, that's also kind of like a, an easy quick win where you really don't want those pages showing up for users. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I, I could probably keep going on and on about this one. I know this is another 12-minute video, but uh, hope you found this one helpful.